Hi guys, it's Shani from Yanomize and Bert from Yanomize. And here are the 10 biggest mistakes we've made at Yanomize. <laughs> Done. We don't always reveal everything that happens. We don't always film everything. No. But um, we're going to let you in behind the scenes. Um, things obviously do go wrong in any business. Yes. So we've got like a little list here of things that um, have gone wrong. We're real. We're humans. We are human. People make mistakes. We have made a few mistakes. Um, so we'll tell you what happened, how it happened, and what we did to rectify it. So let's start with, you know, let, let's take it back to Yanni Supercar Customizer TV show that we had. Okay. We wrapped the Audi in the wrong colour. Stop work on the car. I'm actually very embarrassed, pal. Yes. And very that's, sorry. That's, I'll be honest, that's probably your fault. I've been trying to blame Gina for about three years on this, but yeah, it still probably goes to me. Yeah, it does. What happened? I don't actually know what happened in terms of the, the explanation to it. So, Paul was a good Paul customer was of ours. Artist. Yep. Um, he knows colours. He knows colours. He sees colours. He's in his so specific with his colour. How many cars has he had done with us pre Loads. In the same orange. Yeah. So he's always gone, that's my orange. That's what I want. I can't remember the name of it. I think it was gloss bright orange or something or other. Yeah. That's the tone of orange. Don't, yeah, it is what it is. I'm an artist. I want it that color. Fantastic. No worries, Paul. We get it right all the time. Guess what? Camera start rolling. Yeah, we got the wrong orange. So you're thinking, how did that happen? So I posted a picture on my Instagram. Um, of the car, like halfway through the wrap, and he gives me a question. I'm like, yeah, and he goes, are you sure that's the same orange as I always have? I'm like, of course, Paul, obviously, like, duh, like, as, as <laughs> if, doing, come mate. on, mate, like, are you stupid? Like, why are you questioning me? Anyway, so I go to Bert, and um, I go and grab the vinyl swatches, don't I? And we look, and um, it was wrong. It was the wrong orange, and he spotted it from Instagram. And the we've best part of that was that the car was half wrapped. The car was half wrapped, and we had to strip all the vinyl off and rewrap it the right colour. And it wasn't like, if it was another customer that hadn't ever had a wrap done before, or the colour, we could have said, listen, do, do you mind? It's okay, it's slightly off, you'd never know. But because he'd already had like three or four cars wrapped in that colour, I was like, I'm not even going to say to you about, can we, um, can we blag it? He was like, Yanni, I was like, take care, Paul, I'll see you later. And I was like, strip the car and I went mad. I wasn't yes, happy. Yeah. And that's just forever on, on the TV show. Yanni Supercar Customizer. That's still on Sky at the moment. If you type Yanni in the search box, that show still comes up all the 40 episodes. So you can watch that. Uh, what else have we got? What? Oh God, this happened really recently. So I've got a Lamborghini Urus. And um, we, uh, you know what? We can actually show you the video. This this happened recently, so I've got the CCTV of this. <laughs> Tab's cleaning up, or he's, he's looking for something in the cupboards, and he's moving along. Moving, this is me narrating it now. You've probably seen it on camera. Opening the cupboards, opening the cupboards, and the other boys have cleaned the floor. So they've put the chairs on the, on the tables while they're cleaning the floor. Tab's opened the cupboard, moved the chair, didn't make sure the chair was sturdy enough, and the chair just went. <whistles> Onto my rear light, smash my rear light. <sighs> yeah, um, again, that happened Monday morning. I was not best I pleased. Pav came up and he's like, yeah, I smashed your rear light. I'm like, how'd you smash my rear light? Like, what are you even doing to my car? Why would you, you wasn't even, you were supposed to be working on my car. My car was in for a checkup. It was checking, yeah. we PPF'd it, so we are just doing a final check on it. And yeah, look, how cool is that video though? Yeah, that, that was, that was 600 pounds. It's always your car though, isn't it? So there's always something to do with my car. There's always some reason or something that happens to my car. If you're going to damage or cause some sort of damage or an issue, it's always your car. Yeah, we wrap cars all day long. We very rarely do have issues, but yeah, my car. It, it could be the silliest thing, but we'll break a clip stripping your car. That's it. But that clip, lo and behold, will be on back order for 28 weeks. Yes, and it's like, oh, why? Why Jan's car all the time? That's it. But how cool is that video? Uh, as you can see, Pav at the end. Pav was like this. <laughs> I'm laughing now, but I wasn't laughing at the time, okay? Um, but that, that was a Pav special. The Aventador. We're not going to name whose car it was. So we wrapped an Aventador. And when we, when we were wrapping, we always check over the cars. And we were like... Paint works really bad on this car. And he was like, I don't care, I don't care, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. And I'm like, no, seriously, I think the paintwork's gonna come off and we take the wrap off. And um, 
had it on the car for about a year and when we took the wrap off i think it pretty much took the paintwork off every, every single panel on a lamborghini aventador and people always say when you take wraps off does it damage the paintwork and stuff 9.9 .9 times out of 10 i'd say no but if the cars had paint previously or if the paintwork hasn't been done correctly or if it hasn't been primed correctly or if it hasn't been heated to the certain temperature in the oven correctly you can have issues and this car every panel got damaged and fair play to lambo they stood on i think they've done a goodwill gesture and went 50 50 with the owner on this it wasn't our fault uh, but that happened here and i remember peeling the um well not me i remember the staff peeling on there like yan it's taking the paint off every panel i'm like uh oh yeah. but luckily we have our check sheet when we check a car in and we we had it there and the customer signed to say i'm happy that my paintwork's not great and whatever happens happens that, that was about six grand, I think. That was a six grand. Yeah, and I think it transpired with um, Lamborghini, Volkswagen, Audi Group, and whatever else. There are known faults from that period for paint across. Yeah, the very, very early cars. The very, very early cars. But again, we worked with our customer. We worked with Lamborghini. And, and we'll always try and help people. Even if it wasn't our fault, we tried to help people out. What else have we had? This, oh, okay, this one got two of my staff fired. Fired, fired, fired. We wrapped a Range Rover. I delivered it to London and I didn't spot the customer to me, the panel's not sitting right. So I looked and I was like, yeah, you're right, it's not sitting right. And sometimes when you put lower trims on a Range Rover door, you need to replace the clips. Um, either we replace the clips or they were broken or it didn't get pushed in properly. So I was like, really sorry. It was a customer that I knew. To be fair, I know a lot of my customers and our board, as much as we have a three, four month wait list, it is repeat business, which says a lot about who we are as a company. Um, we always get repeat business because once you've come here, you enjoy coming here. It's an experience. You enjoy the staff. You have a laugh um, and we do a good job. So I took the car into London, saw the fault uh, with the customer, brought the car back, asked a couple of my team to sort it out. They were like, yep, yeah, it's done, blah, blah, blah. I was sending a driver back and before it was leaving, it didn't actually get done. Um, and I, I was on my way out and I spotted and I was like, what's going on? Why is this not done? I spoke to a couple of my styles fuming. So I was like, we've already made a mistake. We're going to send them again. Um, really not happy about that. And I remember kicking off and leaving. And then I went onto the cameras. And I could see the two staff waving their arms. And yeah, well, what? So I rang Bert. I said, Bert, what's, what's the problem? They're like, well, they complain. I said, you know what? Send them home. Um, I said, just send them home. I said, I'm really pissed off. I'm not happy with them trying to say it was done and we'd have been embarrassed again. So I said, send them home, put the phone down. Um, and then again, I look at the cameras, I can see Bert talking to them. Um, and anyway, Bert rings me, he's like, well, they're saying, if you send me home, if you, if you send us home, we're, we're gonna leave. So I was like, okay. So my response was, send them home faster. I was like, you're not gonna call my bluff. You messed up, it was your mistake. And if you feel that it's acceptable, um, so be it then. So I was like, send them home faster. And they left. And that was it. Never worked with them again. They never came back. And, and that's a true story. That's a real true story. We spoke about this previously. We spoke a bit on stereo. Um, but yeah, there's, and I know that a lot of people in the comment section always ask about what happened to the old staff and stuff like that. We, we may do, we may do a thing on that old staff, new staff. Um, but yeah, but yeah, that was, um, yeah. Send them home faster. And they never worked with us again. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, goodbye. Um, another mess up. This was Mike, who used to work here. Okay. Big Mike used to work here. He, um, Rolls Royce. Phantom, was it? Ghost. Ghost. Brand new Ghost. So box new. Fresh. No, not even, like, box, box fresh. The car came to us. If you remember, it was a March registered car. We got the car early part of February. Yeah. So the car hasn't seen the light of day, hasn't done anything. Customer obviously wanted some bits done to it before taking delivery. Yeah. So we've got our relationship with the guys at HRO and Rolls Royce and whatever else. Don't worry, boys, we'll send you the roller before it's due to go to the customer. So it came to us on a truck. So it was yeah. a truck, no number plates, it wasn't PDI, uh, pre-delivery inspection. It literally just turned up for us to do the work that we had to do. So proper fresh, as fresh as you can get. Basically. And what happened? So. So yeah, we broke the window. <laughs> Mike, Mike pulled a trim off and it, it flicked back and hit the glass. But there's a reason why it happened because the glass was down slightly. Yes. 
So normally... And you've got to remember, that is thick glass. That's a Rolls Royce. It's double glazed. It's proper thick glass. Um, God, as you were saying, normally if the window was up... If the window's up, the glass gets its strength from the frame of the door. Yeah. Yeah, so anyone that's ever considered sort of smash-proof glass works best with a glass that's in a frame Correct. because the frame gives it its strength. Obviously, we've dropped the glass down for whatever reason it may have been. I couldn't tell you why. Smash. Didn't shatter, just massive crack and we were like, okay, now what do we do? Yeah. Let's speak to Rolls-Royce. 900 pounds plus of that later. Um, and to be fair, we called the customer, informed him what had happened. We said we we're going to order an original pot from Rolls Royce. Yeah. He was cool. He was really, really cool. Yeah. Understood. He said, I appreciate you telling me. Um, so, yeah, that, that was an expensive day at Yanomise, and I wasn't a happy bunny. Yeah, it was. Things that happen regular, this, this is not one of the things, but taking wing mirror glasses out, they happen all the time. They smash all the time. Um, and they can be from £30, £50, a Ferrari one. 490 odd quid plus the VAT, but then that was heated and left hand drive car and it had a specific yeah, code on it. Arabic yeah. writing in the corner to say things may appear close up, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. But that's not one of the 10, I've just thrown that in there. Uh, but we always try and tell people, and people say, oh, why can't you just fix it and not tell anyone? I'll tell you why. If we replace a window, yeah, if someone knows there's a specific mark in their window or a specific mark in their wing mirror, and then when they come back, they sit in their car, they're like, Something's not right. What's missing? Something's not right. They will know. So you know what? Just better to be honest to say this happened. And yeah, sorry. And obviously we'll, we'll pay for it. We'll repair it. And that is why people come to us. because we, we stand on. We don't try to hide anything. So that was that. Let's talk about your one, but I don't know what you're talking about. A Rolls Royce Cullinan. No. Nah. Yeah. No, it's gone. I yeah. don't know. Um, Rolls Royce Cullinan. We were wrapping it in satin black. Sat in black. It was in the back unit in Sal's unit on stands. So it was sitting very, very high. And you know in the back unit, it goes like this and then comes Step down and goes like that, yeah? And um, Bert decided to open the bonnet. No, I didn't that. decide to open the bonnet. The bonnet was open. If you're going to tell no, the story. The bonnet wasn't open. It was. It was, it was on, on a latch. It wasn't open. It was on the, what do you call it? Oh, the little hooks thing. Yeah. So when you wrap a bonnet, you can have a hook thing, yeah? We've got these hooks. Bit random, but those hooks are for dogs. Don't worry, <laughs> it's fine. They just they they latch, they latch onto the bonnet and latch onto the bottom. So that way, then the bonnet doesn't open fully. Yeah, exactly that. Or close. So when they're working on it, it's it's sturdy rather than people holding the bonnet. Yeah. So essentially, the bonnet was already open. What I decided to do, bit of a fool, is unlatch it. And obviously, where the bonnet, the gas struts already like pulling up, it's just gone. <laughs> <laughs> they went so fast, I tried to catch it. But obviously I'm not tall enough for a Cullinan. <laughs> I'm obviously not tall enough for a Cullinan. So um, yeah, it hit the roof. But again, if there is a silver lining, the bonnet was saved yep, in terms of damage because it, yeah. the vinyl saved it again. Yeah. But yeah, not, bonnets. not my best work. No. Tesla Mirror. Tesla Mirror was on a Model X. X. Anyone that's pulled apart a Tesla will know they're relatively straightforward until you need to go that little bit further, which helps you from a wrapping perspective. And there's not much to strip on a Tesla either. No, not massively. Um, but this was wing mirror. Had to take the wing mirror top away from the bottom, if that makes sense. Yeah. So separate it. Um, essentially, we're doing a D-chrome. So we need to get all of the bottom base part from silver into a gloss black. Yeah. Again, it's a bread and butter job. But obviously on this occasion, it was pulled apart and they are electric on the inside. Um, so when you lock the car, wing mirror comes in. When you unlock it, it comes back out. What PAV decided to do. This is a PAV one. Poor sod. Was you've got two teeth as such. So the mirror, when the mirror just comes out, it stops, it's because it hits a tooth. Yep. Yeah, so anyone that actually ever wants to figure out how does that work, there's a stopping mechanism to it. Pav decided to break one of the stops. Not on purpose. Not on purpose, no, these things happen. But what was happening is that the wing mirror was flipping out and not stopping and just carried on turning. So 
yeah, basically the man walking or woman walking up the pavement could see themselves because the winger had gone all the way around. Um, yeah. I've done so many of these mirrors, but obviously this one got the better of me. Um, we don't normally break things here, but I'm guessing the actual mechanism just got caught up. But um, yeah, so unfortunately this one is for the dustbin, but we don't break things at Yanomai's. That was expensive. What was that one? Five, six hundred quid as well. Another oh, five, six hundred pound, yeah. So the Rolls Royce was the most expensive, but yeah, that was another. Roller was the most expensive. That one wasn't cheap. But again, exactly what you said with regards to the roller, phone up the customer. Yep. We told them exactly what has happened. Um, the best bit about that story is that wing mirror was already replaced. Oh, was it really? I didn't know that. So the car came in, it was a previous customer of ours, yeah. had work done, got involved in a knock, went for insurance, they replaced his wing mirror, hence why that car come back to us to de-chrome that part of the wing mirror, and we broke it. Of course we did. Yeah, so we then had to buy one for him <coughs> as well. So it was replaced twice, that part. Oh my God, okay. Another, another monster one, yeah, Go on. was Paz with the Ferrari. Do you remember that back, one? Back unit. Back unit. Three, uh, 430. No. Was it three? It was a 430? No, it was a 458. No, it wasn't a 458. It definitely wasn't a 458. We talk about the same incident. Do you know about the 458? <laughs> it was a satin grey car. 458. No, it wasn't. It I'm was. sure. Was it a 458? 458. Sure Trestle. Trestle. Yeah. It's 458. Pavel's moving the car, and obviously we parked cars up at night, and he was driving it in. And I don't know, I don't know, he obviously edged too far forward and he just literally touched the trestle and the trestle went Super! on the bonnet. We just wrapped the car. The car didn't get any damage, but the wrap got damaged. We had to strip the vinyl off that yeah. and yeah. Um, and redo the bonnet on that. But there's a silver lining. The vinyl saved the it. The vinyl saved the car. That's it. So anyone out there that wants to wrap their car, not only are you getting the colour you want, but you're getting protection. If the trestle falls on your um, on your car, trestles will not damage your car. We'll put a disclaimer there somewhere. <laughs> uh, something that happened recently: um, Sid's car, Sid's Range Rover. Sid's Range Rover Vogue. Um, he's had three cars done with us now. Yeah. Um, this was the first of the Range Rovers. Yeah. Satin black, with gloss black accents, wheels, and so on. So yeah. it's our bread and butter car. What could go wrong? You know, we do it day in, day out. The guys and girls downstairs are like fully versed how that works and what needs to be done and what doesn't. I'm gonna put this one more so down to how powerful our lights are in the workshop. Yeah. So there's a difference between artificial light and daylight. Natural light. Yeah, so when a car goes outside, I may spot something completely different than what I didn't spot inside and vice versa. Yeah. And this is simply the case here. So we wrapped the car fully satin black. What we didn't realise is that the satin black vinyl that we were using had a fault line in it or a number of fault okay, lines. Explain to them what a fault line is. So the fault line, you, the way vinyl's made and printed and whatever else, it, it goes through rollers. So what tends to happen every now and then is that you get, where it's running through the rollers, you get the, the actual roller lines on the material. Yeah. Anyone that's in signage or whatever else will understand exactly what I mean. It doesn't, it doesn't really show. Um, it's a bit of a tough one to see, but it almost looks like an, an impression like on truck, the material. Like, like, a, like a truck, a tire mark running through the vinyl. It's not everywhere, because the roller doesn't run everywhere. So it's like, so let's say that's the roll, it will run on the top and it will run on the bottom. Yeah. And when we wrapped Sid's car, we didn't actually spot it. And then when it's come out... Um, we didn't even spot it when it came out. To be fair, we didn't even spot it. He had someone clean his car who was in the print game and yeah. spotted it. And Sid called us and we were like, Sid, bring us the car back. We checked it and I was like, no problem. And literally we stripped off one side of his car. It only happened on one side of the car. Stripped it all off and redone it. Um, but yeah, it was, like, it was just like wheels running through it. Um, yeah, print error. Again, it wasn't our fault. Um, however, things do happen and vinyl is vinyl, it's not paint and things can go wrong in paint. You can have imperfections in paint from from not cleaning the panel correctly to runs. Silicons and... Yeah, and not, the, not colour correct and stuff like that. But yeah, that was um, that happened recently. Um, but again, we stood on, stripped half his car, rewrapped half his car and he was 
a very happy customer. And the final one, um, directional vinyl. The vinyl can be directional. So where you cut it off the roll, people just lay it anyway and it's fine. Some vinyl is directional, so you've got arrows. And if you lay it this way, a door, and you lay the wing the other way, you can see the difference in color. Uh, not everyone can see it, but we've got an eye and we can spot it from a mile off. And if you stand from a distance, you'll be like, why does that door look different to that wing? Or why does that door look lift different to the rear quarter? That's happened quite a few times, to be fair. Yeah. Um, you don't always know vinyl's directional. Um, but yeah, that's happened a few times where literally we've wrapped a car and the car's complete and we're like, that door's a different color or that rear quarter's a different color. Yeah. Um, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it's different with bumpers because obviously the bumpers are laid that way, yeah. so you're always going to have a very slight difference variance in colour. But when you're wrapping one side of the car, it's very obvious when one panel... Yeah, so the best example to a directional material is my old M3. Yes. So because it was a flip colour, when you stand one way looking at the car, you'll see a certain colour. If you walk around to the back of the car and look the other way, you'll see a different colour. If that was rotated by whatever whatever then the color flow yeah just wouldn't work because you'd see say yellow this way but then you'd see one door that's green so that's probably the best example of a directional material but again these things do happen and obviously if you start going further into material you also get different batch numbers yeah different um, batch numbers so if a customer has a car wrapped and a year's time we need to replace the panel because it got damaged or whatever Sometimes you can't get it matched, weather, uh, wear and tear. Listen, there's loads of things. And listen, me and Bert could probably sit here and do loads of different different videos like this, um, telling you that like, this is obviously 10 biggest mistakes. I'm sure there's been more mistakes that we can't think of right now. Yeah. Um, but if you like this sort of content, let us know. Uh, me and Bert are gonna try and obviously give back, sit down, give you more content. If you wanna know more about vinyl, if you wanna know about business, um, I think it'd be quite cool to, to shoot this sort of content. So you know, obviously we do the rap videos, we do Tiwe, which is this week at Yanomai's. Um, we, do, we do so many different videos. We do drag races. Uh, but I think this, this sort of video will be cool, um, informative and, and real and honest, like just laid bare. Oh, we don't always get it right, but that's part and parcel of owning the business, I, I guess. And we stand on. We're here. We We're always, still here. Yeah. We're still here to tell the tale. Customers do trust us because we do tell them exactly what's happened if something has gone wrong. Yeah. Not that it goes wrong constantly, but... Right. Yeah. Well, this is, this is life and it's real world. And um, yeah. So guys, everyone in life makes mistakes. Uh, the key thing is to learn from them and try not to repeat the same mistake over and over and over again. Making a mistake once or twice is a mistake. If you do it more than that, it becomes a choice. So on that, thanks for watching guys. Uh, let us know if you wanna see more content like this from myself and Bertie Mize. We'll see you soon, take care. And you're about to watch 10, and you're, okay, let's do that again. <laughs>